Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, how's everybody today? Good, good not bad. It's Friday. Yeah. The teachers are very excited. It's Friday, right, teachers? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm very thankful I can give you the sermon today. Please try to pay attention. I'll try to make it as interactive as possible so everybody can stay awake and focus. All right, then if we can read together. Oh, am I going back? Sorry. All right, then let's read the title together. Ready, begin. Okay, a uh, show of hands. Who has heard the name Barnabas? Uh, a few of you, not too many, but a few of you. Okay, the teacher said yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, then, this is my question for you. Uh, how do people describe you? So think about it, you know, when people say you are blank, blank, blank. What do people say about you? So I would like you to look at the people next to you. Don't stare at them, but look at the person on the right. Look at the person on their left. You know, how do people describe you? Maybe they say you are very happy, uh, you are very shy, or very, uh, you're very energetic, etc. cetera. Uh, tell the person next to you, and let's focus on the positive stuff, okay? So say to them, you are, you are, Grace, tell Zoe, you are, Today, I asked my lovely 10th graders, I'm not a homeroom teacher, but they were my homeroom <coughs> teacher last year, and I'm doing a homeroom with a video with my homeroom soon. So I thought I would have my, uh, the 10th graders volunteer. So maybe a few volunteers there. Then let's say, DK, how would you describe Jay? Jay is blank blank. Okay, very tall person. Then Paul, how would you describe Leo? Extremely tall. Extremely tall. Everybody is going to, with height, then should I be calling on Irene? How would you describe, is it Ryan next to you? Uh, he's funny. He's funny, okay, thank you. All right, uh, when people talk about you, anybody says to you, you are good? Oh, ha, 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 really? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> really? <laughs> question mark. Oh, I should have asked. Honestly, honestly, who says to you, you are good? Ah, okay, all right, thank you, okay. <laughs> yes, and the reason I'm asking you is, let's read the first point together. Ready, begin. Yes, so we're going to learn today uh, about Barnabas. So let's read together Acts uh, 4.36 and Acts 11.24. Ready, begin. Joseph and Levi from Cyprus, whom the apostle called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Okay, then based on these verses, how or who was Barnabas? How were people describing Barnabas? Oh no, it's right here. <laughs> I'm giving you the answer. That's not typical from Dr. Sun. The answer is here, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Barnabas was good. Okay, others, look for the answer right here. Yes. Thank you, one more. Yes. <laughs> okay, we already said that we need to listen to other people. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, very good. You have the answers right there. Yes. So Barnabas was a very holy person, right? Full of the spirit and faith. And he had a good reputation. So everybody thought he was a good person and he was an encouraging person. That was Barnabas. Now, um, not too long ago, what was the big event in Paris? The Olympics, okay. Did anybody become more interested in sports after the Olympics? Maybe a few of you. Oh, did you know? I don't know if there were many new sports, but have you heard of a new sport uh, that came out during this Paris Olympic? Okay, Eden, do you know which is the new sport or one of them? You forgot? Anybody from the older students? Yes. Breaking? Break dancing? <laughs> I'm like, breaking. What are we breaking? Yes, break dancing. You know, I was very surprised. I'm like, oh, break dancing. 
A long time ago, when Mr. Joseph and I were in high school, we went to the same high school, you would see kids like break dancing. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh, you know, many, many years ago, many decades ago, I remember our peers, you know, break dancing during lunchtime. So it was very cool back then. So I was very surprised it's one of the sports in the Olympics. Now, let's see our lovely 10th graders. Oh, no, I already gave you the clue. <laughs> Ignore. <laughs> you have a short memory, so you can forget. <laughs> okay, right? <laughs> I love you. You know I love you. Okay, right? Uh, all right, so let's see if you remember. Uh, where was Dr. Sun born? Argentina. Yes, Argentina, but where in Argentina? Anybody? This was, you know, extra credit question, and nobody got correct. Yes. Yeah, hooray, Joshua. Thank you, and I'm touched. He has never been my homeroom student, but he knows. Wow, good job, Joshua. Yes, Argentina. Now, Argentina, uh, for those who don't know where Argentina is, in which continent is Argentina? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chris should have, you know, taught you very well about South America. Now, in Argentina, there are many uh, good things, but Argentina is very popular for these sports. Anybody? Yes. Soccer. Yes, soccer. Anybody knows the idol, like soccer player from Argentina? Yes. Uh, before. <laughs> he's very recent, and he's not this, like, idol of soccer from Argentina. Yes. Yes, Maradona. So this was decades ago, maybe 30, 40 years, teachers, kind of. I don't think 20 years. He looked very old 20 years ago. But Maradona was one of the most popular uh, players in Argentina, like soccer uh, worldwide. Now, um, Brooke mentioned somebody else. Who currently is the best player in Argentina, I think? Best player. Yes, Messi. But when you hear about Maradona or Messi, um, why are they so famous? Like, why? Like, what do they do? Yes? Uh, good at what? Because there are many skills in soccer. So what are they good at? Kicking balls. Kicking balls. Yes, OK. All right, they're not goalies. OK, then uh, Sean, you like soccer. So what are they good at? <laughs> Dribbling, OK. Do you know about Maradona? <coughs> Not really, okay. Anybody old enough to know about Maradona? Even our teachers, anybody knows Maradona? Oh no, we don't have soccer fans. <laughs> I see, okay. But has anybody heard Messi or Maradona being good in assisting other players? Yeah, really? For who, Daniel? <laughs> Wasn't that you? Yeah, really. Daniel, no? Yes, uh, I haven't heard a lot that they are good at assisting other players to be able to put the goal. So, think about assisting. Soccer. <laughs> Who comes into your mind? Yes, Korea comes into mind. So then it's our soccer player, Son Heung Min. All right. <laughs> For those who don't know him, that's him. And those who do not know what assist means is if Son uh, this. Okay, if Son is right here, he would kick the ball to Johnson, and Johnson would be the one who would be able to make the goal. Um, anybody knows what ratio it might be between the goal and assist of Son Hung Min? Anybody wants to give it a guess? Besides Daniel, come on, our seniors. <laughs> anybody soccer player? Oh, Peter, don't you like soccer? <laughs> yeah, so tell us, what do you think will be the ratio between goal and assist? Oh, 10 tenths are about equal? Okay. Uh, others who know soccer, do you agree? Not agree? I guess we don't have a lot of soccer fans here. All right. So to give you um, an idea of what it is, so Peter was correct for 2019 and 2020. So it's the same number. Pretty impressive. Uh, but generally, he does more goals than assists, but his assist numbers are pretty high, right? Even if he was 17 to 10, 12 to 7, 12 to 6. So Son Min is very good not only at playing uh, soccer himself, but he's very good at helping others show off their skills. Now, I would like you to show you a brief clip. Everybody will be excited. We will watch a little bit of soccer, okay? To see how Son Min is assisting others. <coughs> Can we? 
Do we need the lights off? No? Can you see what? Okay, so that was Hunung Min. This is him. Oh, did you see that goal? That's impressive, right? <laughs> so this is uh, Son Heung Min. <laughs> Do you see? He's not trying to put the goal himself, but he's giving it to somebody else to have a clear shot. So that was Son Heung Min. That's Son Heung Min. Ah. I guess, oh, uh, can I move? Hey, that's him right here. Yes, so. Then you saw some examples of how Son Mi was helping his peers uh, for the whole team to win. So what is one of the qualities of sports that's very important? Brian? Teamwork. 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 Sportmanship, right? And there are many other examples in the Olympics, right? Even though if somebody's hurt, you take your time to help them, even though that might be them, you might be losing. Okay. Now, uh, let's bring this to JCS. So the question is, who is a great supporter at JCS? So look around, look at the front, look at the back, look sideways. If you think they are great supporters, give them a thumbs up or wink at them. Anybody? <laughs> no thumbs up? Look around. High schooler, it's okay. You can look at around at each other. Okay, then let's go back to the 10th graders. Who hasn't spoken yet? Okay, Jay, so who would you say is a great supporter, a peer, a student, not a teacher? Who would you consider a great supporter? Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Chang, Caleb Kim? <laughs> Caleb Chang, okay, all right. Then uh, who else hasn't participated yet? I can't see very well. Paul, what about you? Nobody. <laughs> Sean. Sean. <laughs> He's like, oh, somebody. Okay, Sean. Silly, what about you? Oh, DK. Okay, Rina. Anybody from JCS that you think is a great supporter? It doesn't have to be from your class, like across <laughs> grades. J. J. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. So, then let's try to answer these questions honestly. And this is the key that I want you to do. If you agree, you are going to have your thumbs up and everybody raise your hand so we'll practice. If you agree with the question, thumbs up. Come on guys, come on. Okay, thumbs up if you agree. If you think so, so maybe kind of is sideways. Okay, maybe, uh, kind of, okay. If you think no, then we're going to do thumbs down. Okay, and you don't need to make sounds like woo. <laughs> Just, uh, just show your thumbs, okay, everybody? All right, let's go to the first question. Okay, do I encourage others? I'll say one, two, three, and honestly, God is watching your parents. We have some parents watching, right? And we have your peers watching, okay. Do I encourage others? One, two, three. Okay, we have some people who are honest, some down, some sideways, okay, thank you. All right, second question. Am I a good person? Based on the Bible, okay? Not just, you know, good what I think. Am I a good person? Everybody ready? One, two, three. Okay, let's be honest. I see too many thumbs up. Oh, okay, okay. All right, the last question. This is the hardest question. Am I full of the Holy Spirit and faith right now? Not yesterday, not last year, not many seasons ago. Okay, one, two, three. 
Okay, so I see a few up, a few down. All right, thank you for being honest. All right, put your hands down. Thank you. Then let's move on to the second point. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. Okay, so we learned that Barnabas was full of the Holy Spirit and faith. He was a good person and he was an encouraging person. Now we will learn what he was doing. So let's read the scripture together. Ready, begin. You are the church at Jerusalem, and they served to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Yes, then Barnabas was a missionary. So the disciples were all in Jerusalem, but then they heard that there were some non Jews. So people who were not from Israel that were starting to believe in Jesus. So they sent Barnabas. So Barnabas went to the church that is called Antioch. Now, are we Israelites? No, we are not Jews, right? But if the disciples or anybody who believe in Jesus didn't tell God's word and God's love to non-Jews, would we right now believe in God? No, maybe we would believe in like Buddha or in Islam, other religions, right? But we are fortunate enough as Koreans to know God. And that made me think about it. I was thinking, okay, so we believe in Jesus, then how? You know, how did God's word come to Korea? So I started doing a little bit of research. Uh, we'll come back to this pretty soon. And I found one of the early missionaries. I don't think he's the earliest, but he's one of the earliest missionaries. Anybody knows any missionary, early missionary that came to Korea? No? When Korea was still like one country. No? Maybe? History? <laughs> we didn't learn history yet? Okay. So his name is uh, Robert Germain uh, Thomas, and we're going to watch a, a quick clip about him. But he went to Korea through a trade but it was not an invited trade, which was illegal, okay? But through him, uh, somebody, or they say like a legend or story, that uh, one of the soldiers was able to pick up the Bibles that he brought, even though uh, the missionary died, and through that, God's word came in <coughs> Korea. So let's briefly watch this clip. That God will use Christian brethren to refresh him and strengthen him and his zeal for the Lord. While in the city of Jifu, working as a customs officer, God would allow his paths to cross with two Koreans who told him of the situation in Korea, and God used those conversations to give him a burden for the people of the Korean Peninsula. In 1866, the opportunity for Robert Thomas to finally visit the Korean Peninsula would come. He was asked to go along a ship called the General Sherman, an American ship, seeking to make build ties of trading between the Koreans and the Americans, and he was asked to go along as a translator. However, Thomas had a very different agenda. His goal was to take as many Bibles as he could and get them into Korea. And so Thomas boarded the General Sherman with great aspirations of what God was going to do. After traveling upriver to the city of Pyongyang, the American ship was met with great opposition. The Koreans were rejecting any type of Western influence and demanded that the vessel turn around. After a few days, much fighting broke out. The General Sherman soon caught fire killing many on board and forcing others, like Robert Germain Thomas, to flee ship and come to the riverbank. There on the riverbank, he was greeted by Korean soldiers. He greeted them, sopping wet with a Bible in his hands, and with a little bit of Korean he knew, he yelled out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. One soldier stepped forward, and with one swoop of the sword, off with Robert Germain Thomas's head. The Bible flew up into the air and fell down onto the riverbank. The soldier who beheaded Robert Germain Thomas grabbed that Bible that was on the, the riverbank there and took it back to his house. He took that, the pages out of the Bible and used it and wallpapered his house with the pages of Scripture. That would have a great impact on the people of Korea. People would come from all over and read the Scriptures. We do know that he had a nephew who would come and read and be converted and would go on later to become one of the first pastors on the Korean Peninsula. All of this why? Because one man was willing to lay down his life so that others could hear.
Yes, yeah, so uh, missionary Robert Jermaine Thomas, he gave his life for the gospel and he yelled, Jesus, Jesus, and through that, God brought the gospel to Korea. Now, how many of you honestly uh, would give your life for your best friend? Anybody? You know, very. Uh, Uiji? Uiji? Is it Uiji? <laughs> Uiji, Uiji. Okay, Korean Uiji. Okay. Oh, really? Not many of you? We have the younger ones, the older ones. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's put your hands down. Okay, then how many of you would give up your life for your parents? Oh, I guess I'm relieved <laughs> as a parent. Okay, thank you. Put your hands down. Then, honestly, how many of you would give up your life for the gospel, like this mission? Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm pretty sure God is happy to see those hands up and uh, put your hands up. Okay, going back to uh, Barnabas' story. So Barnabas, the first time he went by himself to uh, the church in Antioch, but then he came back to Jerusalem and he took another person with him. Does anybody know who Barnabas took to uh, the church in Antioch later? No? Uh, do you know Paul? <laughs> Do you know Paul? Yes, Apostle Paul. What was his name before? It was Saul. So when he was Saul, did he like uh, Christians? No, he persecuted Christians. He was trying to put them in jail. He was uh, killing them, etc. But now he's Paul. He's a new person. So as a new person, what was he doing? He was preaching, teaching God's word. So Barnabas took uh, Paul to Antioch and they were able to do the ministry there. Now, some of you might be thinking, uh, ministry. So what is ministry or what is it going on a mission? So going on a mission is you go to people who are not, let's say, from the same culture. So if you go to, let's say, you guys went to the Philippines, that would be a mission. Or even if you go to non-Koreans in Korea, that would be a mission as well. But this is a question that some of us may be asking. Can we read it together? Ready, begin. <laughs> Okay, so I try to think of some excuses that we might give of going uh, on a mission or living a missionary life. So one of them might be, I am too young, right? These are our lovely fourth graders. I am too young, how can I go on a mission? Your other excuse could be, I am broke. I have no money, you know, going on missions outside of Korea is so expensive. I cannot afford it, my parents cannot afford it. Uh, another one that's very popular among you know uh, high school students or junior high is I'm just too busy. I have academy, I have jump roping, I have drum lessons, I have math lessons, I have all these things. I don't have the time. Okay, but something else it could be my personality. I'm a shy person. It's kind of uh, uncomfortable or it's outside of my comfort zone to go talk to people that I don't know. Or maybe you might be worried, I don't have all the skills. I'm not good at speaking Tagalog, or I'm not good at speaking Spanish, I'm not good at speaking any other language that you're going to that mission field. Or you might say, I'm not good in doing body worship. You know, I'm not good teaching kids. So you might have these excuses. The last excuse that I thought about might be, it could be that you don't really like that culture. Maybe you think you have your, this preconceptions. Oh, you know, they do this, I don't like that. Or they are dirty, or whatever. So they are not in your standard. So you might have that excuse. This is why I can't go on a mission, right? But let's read this verse together. Ready, begin. <laughs> Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have learned from you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the day. Okay, in this verse, does it say, therefore go and make disciples of the people that you like? Does it say, May go, uh, go and make disciples of the people that you know? No, it says all nations, not only my neighbors, not only people in Korea, not only people in Asia, everybody to the ends of the earth then i met jesus through someone's sacrifice who am i to judge other people oh they don't deserve to know the gospel i was kind of shocked um, i am doing the ministry right now at our church and i was asking our students okay so can you tell me a name of someone that you can witness you know a lot of kids in public school they go to school with kids that don't believe in jesus right and one of the students said Oh, you know that person? Uh, I don't think that person is good to come to church. And I was very shocked. 
<laughs> Hopefully, uh, for you, it's going to be different, right? We are sinners too. Like if I was able to see everything you do, everything you see, probably you wouldn't like it. So we cannot judge other people and say, oh, you, don't, you or they don't deserve to know Jesus. We need to have an open mind and a heart as Jesus does for everybody. Okay, then think about this and who is going to be with us when we go on missions? Yes. Yes, he's going to be with us to the end of the age. So it's not by our skills, our experience, our talents, our desires that we are going on a mission. It's because God is with us. So imagine, we had these students and staff going to the Philippines. Do you think all of them are extroverts? No, right? So honestly, those who are in this <laughs> wonderful picture, I am an introvert. Can you raise your hand? Yes. If, <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> you're raising your hand. Oh, introvert, I see, okay. Uh, did all of you feel that you were very prepared to go on to this mission? Probably not. Did all of you have no worries at all? You know, it's too hot, too humid. You know, am I going to sleep on the floor? So many mosquitoes, you know? Probably, yes, some of you had this worry. Uh, did all of you feel comfortable knowing everything you have to teach every body worship? everything? No, but they still went because they were prepared spiritually. I'm pretty sure and hopefully they pray for the mission, right? So what I am encouraging you today is to try to live a missionary life like God wants us to do. And it's not because, oh, I want to write this in my resume. Oh, I want to feel like other people like, are grateful for what I do. It's not because of that, but it's because God wants us to live a missionary life. Okay. Then to summarize today's sermon, let's read uh, the title, Ready, Begin. An extraordinary supportive Barnabas. A great supporter helps and builds up others. We must live a missionary life being full of the Holy Spirit and faith. Okay, to finish, I would like you to quickly read these questions with me and then just share one of these questions with the person next to you and we'll finish uh, by praying. Let's read it together. How will I encourage someone? To, how will I be good to others? How will I be filled with the Holy Spirit and faith? How will I live a missionary life? So just turn to the person next to you and maybe for 30 seconds, choose one question from here and answer. How are you going to be good to your parents, your friends, your teachers? I would like to have a few more students from the 10th grade to share any of the questions that you answer. Can we have Grace, Tiffany, and uh, Philip, and Sean? Any answer that you gave based on this question? Let's start with Grace. Okay, thank you. Then Philip? All right, thank you. Then Tiffany? Okay, thank you. Then Shop? Okay, thank you. Let's give the 10th grader a hand today for participating in chapel. Uh, let's pray.